Hey, good evening to all of you uh, friends uh, who are gathered here uh, for this session. And I'm so delighted to, you know, uh, present uh, the content uh, of uh, unifying skills and talent. Uh, indeed, it is uh, pretty interesting uh, for me to talk about it because uh, this topic is, has been an inspiration uh, by one of our uh, participants who have created this topic. So this is basically an effect and the causes uh, uh, from that particular gentleman, you know, who was uh, invoked uh, this uh, uh, topic. So my special uh, thanks to him. So is that screen is uh, visible to all of you? Hello. Uh, not yet, sir. The screen is not visible. The screen sharing uh, is not on for us. Yeah, I guess something is loading now. Okay, now we can able to see the PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, so, friends, uh, uh, in case if you have, uh, uh, as uh, Vignesh was introducing, that you know we can have a question answer session at the uh, uh, end of uh, this program. But beforehand, uh, is it? Do you have any questions about uh, this kind of a topic? You may not have it uh, particular relevant uh, to this. But by and large, you know, if you have anything, probably uh, you can put a, a note or something like that. So we can blend your questions and the answers through the program. So it makes better benefits to all of us. If it's there anything, probably you can take a few seconds and uh, share it with us. Anybody there to put a question? Uh, participants, if you have any questions, you can post it in the question tab on your screen. Uh, I guess probably as we go, they may have come with questions, sir. Yeah, okay. So as uh, I want to set a stage, uh, you know, before we getting into this uh, program, uh, many of you would have had a fair knowledge about uh, the jargons called uh, talent and, you know, many people are talking about skills and stuff like that. And uh, today, the dynamics of the industry, overall industry, you know, if you really look at, uh, is also uh, getting into uh, this kind of a jargons. Uh, let's see some of, uh, very few of them which we have selected on this, uh, which is becoming a big buzz uh, by various industries, you know, uh, not specific to any particular domain. They say about, uh, they are looking out for a talent management or, uh, you know, there is a big buzz in uh, Google and everywhere there is something called a talent hub, you know, current and, you know, future talent kind of thing. So what exactly is that? Either do they define what is the talent or have we recognize what exactly is the talent? This is something which uh, this session uh, would be taking uh, you through. And uh, moving on from the talent, again, there is another buzz uh, which people will call about, uh, you know, you need to have a relationship skills and communication skills, leadership skills, and so technical skills, social skills. And so many, you know, uh, uh, people are talking about the skills and uh, various uh, uh, things. And these are very few that has been, uh, 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 you know, displayed in the screen. But, you know, like, you know, could be your driving skill, this skill, that skill. Actually, what is skill all about? From where does the skill come to us? From where does the talent come to us? And who are we essentially? Are we based our life on talent? Or we are basing our life on our skills. These are all the certain questions you know, which uh, should uh, you know, try to uh, uh, invoke uh, our inner uh, personalities, uh, which will uh, try to uh, you know, help you. And through the session, we're also trying to help to answer such questions. How do we identify the talent? How do we manage talent? How do we develop skills? What are the various uh, levels of acquiring skills and all these uh, would be the objectives of this particular session. Quickly moving on to this, uh, I guess the screen is available to all of us. Are you all able to see the screen? Yes, sir. We could able to see. Yeah. Thank you. This is 
like setting a stage for this session and also setting a stage for your forthcoming life. Everybody has got a goal. Everybody has understood the goal as an objective. But now, today, you know, uh, the industry, the world is changing in such a dynamic pace where we are really looking out for, or we are in actually a wonderment, you know, what's happening around the industry, what's happening around it. Today, you, uh, when you go to sleep, there's something called a technology. When you wake up, again, there is a new technology that is stopping it. And are we able to catch up with those technologies? Every decade, there's some kind of a changes has been happening. For example, if you take about uh, three decades back, you know, people used to talk about uh, dot coms and blah, 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 kind of a big, big names and big, big jargons. Then slowly, 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 the industry uh, is getting transformed. And today we are talking about, you know, uh, data, data science and, you know, so many, so many other factors, you know, which are uh, really uh, getting into the, changing the dynamics, basically not getting into the, changing the dynamics of the industry. That's getting operated, be it manufacturing, healthcare, and so on, so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. Now, as we have seen in the past uh, two screens, you know, people are looking out for a talent behind, that people are looking out for talent acquisition, they call it us, and stuff like that. So the whole uh, hiring is based on a whole, uh, not only hiring, uh, maybe for the students, this may be relevant, the hiring may be a relevant word, but for uh, people who are already employed, you know, the hiring, uh, the work, it could be a right word that, you know, where we can say about your promotions or your upscaling, uh, upscaling of your career and stuff like that. And for entrepreneurs also, this particular trend is more applicable that, you know, they keep on changing their skills, their mode of, uh, you know, uh, business augmentation, the mode of their client interaction and so on and so forth. So today, uh, the jargons, you know, as people say, the talent and, you know, uh, people say about all these skills and all, all this stuff are going to play a very vital role in each and every individual's life. At whatever spheres uh, you know we are in, whichever space we are in, uh, this is going to become a key driver, very very particular key driver, and how we are going to coin our life, how we are going to you know drive our life using these two aspects. You know they are not actually very different from each other, but yeah, at a subtle point, they are slightly different, but not too very uh, different about it. Now, the objective of this session after uh, we got inspired by the title uh, recommended by one of our friends who's a participant over here, is to give a clear definition, a clear identity, a clear recognition of yours to the whole industry. If you are a student, Apart from your academic skills, what are you going to gather? What is your talent that has been brought out of your academic skills? This is the key aspect which we will be saying that. Knowing is an aspect of life, but how that knowing makes you a person, what it makes you drive your ambitions, your goals, your objectives through your talent, and how you go to achieve your goals is what is going to be the key. And now through this program, our effort, our endeavor is to make you that new I am dash. So we wish if you fill yourself with that uh, new identity, new recognition that uh, today we are really looking out for. The organizations are looking out for, or the world, you know, it's looking out for. This is what is going to be the objective of this particular session. And let's move on to this. You are seeing a screen where, you know, there is something called a big stone or a, a rock kind of a thing that uh, let's relate it to talent. Now, what is talent? Which I'll be covering a little detail about it in the slides. But in a brief, I can uh, you know, start off with, uh, 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 you know, uh, it's like this. The talent is something which is coming out of our nature. Uh, either we get inspired by something or it comes by our nature, probably by, uh, for an example, if I have to take it in a real-time experience. Some may have uh, a painting as a talent. 
സമയഹാവ് സിംഗിങ് സമയഹാവ് അത്ലറ്റിക്സ് ഓർ റണ്ണിങ് ഓർ സംതിങ് സമയഹാവ് സ്പീക്കിംഗ് കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേഷൻ സ്കിൽസ് ബൈ ബർത്ത് വി വിൽ ബി ഏബിൾ ടു ഈസിലി കൺവിൻസ് വിത്ത് യുവർ പാരൻസ് ഓർ ഐ ഓർ സ്കൂൾ ടീച്ചേഴ്സ് ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് സോ സോ ഫോർ so the talent is actually a natural phenomenon or natural yeah natural phenomenon which comes by birth which comes through the influence of the society which comes through various inspirations so that is the simple definition of a talent now what this talent is going to make a difference in life is the talent is going to make your life or is your talent is going to make a difference in life this is the factor which we all have to really understand try to understand and see how every individual who would be benefiting out of this particular program or uh, by sharing this uh, to your friends and colleagues and uh, so on so forth or your relatives how everyone or one and all would be benefiting of that now having merely simple uh, simply talents what we call it as you know uh, uh, i know singing i know dance it's only claim you know we we uh, typically you know we keep uh, climbing on uh, these uh, 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 talents and uh, and many of uh, us would have actually experienced uh, many of us would have actually experienced uh, some of our elders uh, would be saying that uh, i had this talent had i had an opportunity then i would have brought this talent into reality or this uh, love come into reality or that would have come into reality and they would be in the age of 16 or 15 or almost in the tiny age but is there a point uh, in talking about all these things at that time? where they had a different talent they have chosen a different career path altogether and they would have been traveled you know with a kind of regrets and uh, stuff like that so now uh, when we are trying to say that we are going to unify the skills and talent what actually is the skill we need to question these fundamentals everybody say the skill that skill and all this stuff so where does the skill come from what is the source of the skill or what is the driver that is going to attract uh, skills for us now if you really look at uh, what is popped out is like a, the chisel uh, part of the uh, big rock you know what we are talking all about now the skill whatever we are acquiring has to be in relevance with the talent what we have if we have a x talent and you know we develop a y skill the life goes on absolutely no doubt about it but at the same point in time we need to have a question whether my talent is being satisfied the urge of satisfying talent have i attempted for it or it has happened to me or did i have something about it or did i do something about it so my talent has come out in reality ultimately everybody everybody you take about yourself as an individual and your friends your relatives your parents your so and so for every anybody for the matter what are we really looking for in life why are we talking to somebody else uh, in a particular manner in a particular fashion in a particular way in a particular language in a particular style in a particular jargon what are we trying to if you really understand that we'll be able to uh, see one thing very clear pretty clearly pretty pretty clearly that we have something in us we are trying to communicate to others that i have this in me please look at that isn't it take a while for a, for a, for this to stop let this thought for thought ponder in your life right now or even later do we try to communicate to others that i have this 
but in a fashion that we are trying to communicate that to them uh, is, is probably the way we want them to understand or the way we have understood and you know we allow them to understand on their own style now having said about this talent is about your nature it is you know uh, uh, either you get it through the inspirations and you know or it is inherent or whatever whatever it is now the skill happens to be a tool and ultimately what everybody are trying to become is this now you can connect all the three pictures together to give a definition of yourself a new definition of yourself that this is my talent i've chiseled my talent and today i have done this we need the third part i am uh, i put it uh, on uh, idol of a uh, 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 to uh, motivate you or to inspire you you know as uh, you want to become a celebrity but the pillow is also true that you know you can fill up i am this now i have this talent i have developed adequate skills for to bring out the talent now i have become this now if you really look at the third picture even if you happen to be there physically at that particular place what you would admire what you would look at the most will you look out the stone part or will you look out the idol part of it which is being made which is so pleasing you know uh, which is uh, even uh, to, uh, to that text we were the worship kind of thing which one you would admire exactly the talents and the skills together if we are blend together you would become a kind of celebrity you should ideally become a kind of celebrity if we go through the process of this particular uh, presentation and you know, i will be taking you through that and uh, i wish that everybody get inspired by, by this and i think to start working on uh, your skills and talents portray that to the world and become more successful in life now If you look at this slide, by a mere look, you will be absolutely confused. What are what is this trying to get communicated? How do I identify who am I? Who am I in the sense I'm not talking at the any kind of a higher uh, uh, you know uh, uh, level level of uh, uh, introspection. I'm talking at the basic level of uh, introspection to identify who you are. You need everyone, everyone, including this. Uh, Everybody, everybody, your seniors and so many other people uh, uh, would have gone through the stage in life. Where, where am I? Where am I? Uh, sir, I guess your slide is not moving. No, no, I didn't move it. Move it. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, first question, everybody today. I'll take you uh, through the slide with the various practical examples uh, with which you will be able to understand. Uh, how you should start looking out your life first let's ask the question uh, typically people have a doubt have a fear or uh, they might be anxious about it where am i where am i in the sense i'm not talking at a physical level that you may have a uh, answer like you no know, i am at home i am sitting in front of a mobile phone seeing this particular session no we are, i'm not talking about that where am i in the sense the current state status of your life current position of your life either you might be a student or you might be an employer or you might be an entrepreneur or you might be a what what sort of this where i don't want to be is the next connection typically what happens in life this is by and large uh being taken uh, as even a comedy uh, statement that uh, when in studentship you know uh, to me happened it, it all happened when i was so inspired by my father that you know he was wearing colored dress going to office and coming back home and where i used to you know sit across with the books and stuff like that so i used to think not only me many people would have thought about it oh my god when do i become that when do i get i know read of these books and all this stuff when do i become that the moment you come over to that stage and you know you get into the routine of your work and get into the uh, uh, you know the dynamics of the real world and stuff like that 
very thing you wish I would have been a student by now. Now, oh, I mean, how much of stress, how much of this is there, how much of responsibilities, how much of, uh, you know, thinking to be done and stuff like that. Uh, this is one sort of uh, puzzle uh, which comes in many of the minds, many of the minds. Where am I in the sense I am doing in the uh, wish I could have done an MBBS, where I don't want to be. It's like I don't want to be uh, uh, you know, a sales person or I don't want to be this, I don't want to be that. Now, if you give that. Excuse me, sir, sorry to. Uh, yeah. Again. So, are you in that fourth slide? Or which same slide, slide, same slide, same slide, same slide. I didn't move it. Because for us, uh, we could able to see only the first slide. Uh, the, the title slide alone, we could, we could able to see. Okay, now we could able to see who am I? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Thank you. Is it clear now? Yes, it is. It is, sir. Yeah. So, so this is a kind of a puzzle where uh, in, a, in an employment situation where we can take it as a classical example that, you know, when we enter into the uh, any organization uh, as a, ah, naturally we have to enter into as a junior something. So we enter into as a juniors and we always aspire that, you know, what happened to, you know, how it will be like if I become a manager. That is, I'm not there. I'm here. I'm a junior. I'm not there where I want to be. Now, if this puzzle actually triggers, uh, you know, a person's personality on how he got to be, if I'm not there, what will make me to go there? where I want to be. I want to become this. I want to become a manager. I want to become a consultant or I want to become a celebrity. I want to become this. I want to become the whatsoever it may be your aspirations, whatsoever it may be your dreams. But what that connects you, your current you, your current uh, status, your current experiences to that is what is going to be determined by the talent and the skills. So this is what is the basic idea about this uh, puzzle, what uh, the screen I wanted to convey uh, that to you. In case if you have any doubt or something like that, probably either we can take it offline or we can take it a little later as well. So first let's understand what it needs, what this talent, what this skill and how when they club together, what they do to us. Basically, many of uh, MBA students, if you are there, you would have uh, seen this uh, pyramid of Maskov's law. And uh, maybe some, it may be new to you. But anyway, I'll try to take a little bit of a time to explain on that. Here, when I mean a psychological needs, you know, I'm not going to talk about your bread, butter, or your, uh, uh, your how, clothes, and stuff like that. No. You are an aspirant in this world. You have something in you which you wanted to achieve in your life either it could be your name it could be fame it could be wealth it could be social status or it could be anything for that matter you have some something which is inherent in you which you need to identify and then you need to try to take it up to the reality you need to put your efforts in the right direction and you need to bring it to the right direction that's going to be a psychological uh, sir, one second, the slides are stuck. Probably uh, uh, try turning on that uh, slideshow mode, sir. Since it, uh, you're not scrolling it one by one, that's why it gets stuck. Yeah, now we could see the, the Maslow's kind of uh, pyramid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, if you could able to turn it on that uh, slideshow mode so that every time you, you know, kind of click it to change the next slide. Is it okay? Yeah, now it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. So, uh, now we have spoken about the psychological needs. Now we are going to talk about the safety needs. Here again, I'm going to talk about, you know, uh, try to visualize along with me. When I'm saying uh, psychological needs, safety needs, or social needs, and esteem needs, take it from the talent uh, angle to that who am I angle on the left hand side of it. So you will be traveling along with me in this particular uh, session. Safety is you have your own nature. You probably would have identified your own nature or uh, through your education and stuff like that, you have acquired something in your life and you need to protect it from not getting disturbed or distracted by the dynamics of the entire world or your social life or your environment, the conditions and stuff like that. 
let's say I have become, for example, I've done accountants, become or accountants or something like that. For example, I'm just giving a, a raw example. Whether by virtue of my nature I've done it or by so some source I've done it or whatever it is, I have acquired that particular knowledge to base my life around it. Now, what is the safety and what is unsafe here? So many people will be coming and saying that, you know, you have done accountancy, what much you can do, that you can do, you take the same job you will do for all of your life, and so on and so forth. Now, this might affect your moral. So, Protecting your moral is most important. That is one of the aspect of safety. Rules. Then coming about the aspect of social needs. When it comes to question of social needs, where I'm uh, talking about an enterprise or an organization that is also part of your society, where uh, you know so many things has been changing. Where earlier they used to have a box for accounts, and then the computers came in, then ERP came in, then so many other softwares has been. Uh, developed and you know for accountants alone you know or for accountancy particularly you're doing the account from the company account or whatever it is so many uh, things is being developed now you need to cope up your talent according to that particular growing uh, situation then coming in the case of uh, esteem needs esteem needs is about establishing yourself at one particular uh, with an idea this guy given this task is done or the task is designed uh, let me put this in a, this kind of simple way the moment you come across these first three stages and come to a stage where you become an identity you don't create you become an identity then what happens is people will start you know designing the task according to your uh, nature your identity and thus you keep moving on then you get an answer of oh hi Okay, I've done my week off, I've done this, I've crossed all these challenges and come back. Now here, if you look at on the left-hand side, we have seen about it. Let's take about the right-hand side of it. I put it on a skills. If you don't develop skills, adequate skills, there are many, 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 many chances that you will get stuck at one particular point in time. You may have a great talent. I may be a great singer, I may be a great artist, I may be a, a great bike rider, I may be a great uh, uh, you know, uh, car driver, whatsoever it is. But if I don't have that adequate skill, right, then it is going to be a major challenge for me to grow in life. Now, what are the things called? We call it an adequate skill. Let us say, for example, I'm a crazy driver. I have a drive, passion for driving, and that is my talent. Now I take the car uh, on a traffic road or in a prime of the city and you know I show all of my uh, you know, fast driving, fast driving kind of skills. What could happen? Can you imagine? Either I'll be killed by a police or I would have uh, you know, become a cause of an accident or you know people will start hating me and the moment they see next time in the same car, they will not be able to appreciate me. They will definitely keep cursing me. So having Applying, acquiring a skill is a challenge and applying that in a right place is going to be another challenge. Let's take the same me as an example. I have a very a fast driving car or a bike or whatsoever it is and I'm on a highway. And I'm on a highway. So what will happen? Just imagine I'm going at a 40 km per hour or very, very slower speed. There I'm underplaying my skill. Now we need to understand where is my talent what is my talent and what kind of a skills that i am acquiring we will be talking about our skills as we saw just in a first or second third slide we will be talking about it let me later where my talent is uh, you know uh, let us say uh, i'm a very good at uh, I've, I've done a golden medal uh, in a big off and i'm very good in all terms of accountancy and stuff like that or uh, a uh, uh, kind of engineering or kind of medicine and stuff like that. To portray my talent to people, like I know this, I have this kind of a thing, 
uh, for students, I will put this way. It's called an interviewing skill. In an interview, if you are not able to portray your talent through your communication skill, here is the skill, communication skill, then you might possibly miss out some good opportunities. In employment, uh, many people have been asking uh, or thinking about this. I have a talent. How do I portray my talent? Stuff like that. So if you don't know, or if you have not acquired, or if you have not learned that expressing your talent, it's, it's a way of communicating your talent to your immediate boss, or your colleague, or uh, whatsoever it is. And if you don't communicate, uh, have that communicative skill to express your talent, then you may not get additional responsibilities, or you may not get your growth path very clear about it, and stuff like that. So it is not uh, a, a must that, you know, I go to my manager and say, hey, manager, I have X skill, Y skill, uh, I mean, well, H talent, Y talent kind of thing. It's not actually required. If you really understand this way, you may even go to your colleague and say, hey, colleague, I have this skill talent, I want to know uh, how to bring it up. Maybe he might become a tool. He goes and talks to somebody else or his manager or his superior, whoever it may be. And he goes, communicates, he passes, conveys that, you know, this person has got this, this kind of a talent kind of thing, then you move up the ladder. So from psychological means, psychological need is expressing your talent. Safety needs is protecting your talent. You need a skill how to protect your talent. Social needs, you need to have a skill not to get wavered off. You need to be very firm. You know, society may comment so many things, society may criticize so many in so many ways, they, they will keep telling about anything. But not getting affected, you need to have that emotional balancing skills. Esteem skills, esteem needs to establish yourself. Once you come to a position, for example, commonly I used to, uh, one way I admire, uh, one way I'm uh, impressed, uh, inspired also about these uh, politicians and police and stuff like that. The moment they come into a position, maybe an actor or anybody, you can, uh, you with your friends and you would have got this experience. Some will be talking positive about them, some will be talking negative about them. Uh, all, uh, uh, you know, ifs and buts, you know, they used to put on them and stuff like that. But when you come to that stage, you need to have that endurance. Like, okay, even if appreciation comes to me, how I do handle it? That is a skill. Having the patience, analyzing the situation, whether they are talking to you or not, whether it would affect me or not, so kind of a thing. So this is how the whole kind of game, you know, uh, would have to be played on that. Having said that, by not understanding whatever I've been uh, presenting to you in the past, in your few past of our time, what could happen and what will happen? What is that industry or what is that society is really looking out for us? If you take the first part of the screen and the top part of the screen where I put in a graver, Naturally, what would happen is, if you really look at the talent is facing some other direction and the skill is facing uh, in the opposite side, it means you know they are upside down. It means they have not really identified properly, they are not nurtured properly, or they have been completely ignored also. Ignored could be a right word, maybe suitable words are supposed to feel so, you know, probably you can uh, fill that. What will happen is, we become flavors. Anybody who is going through that situation, that particular part of a uh, situation, will keep on craving. I need this, but what do I do? I need that, but what do I do? Always craving. If somebody else has got, that's how the jealousy, the hatreds, and all kind of negative emotions, you know, surfaces in the person. I don't know, wish he's got a car, I don't have. You know, I need a car, I don't have. My fate is not really kind of thing. This. You may say, some may wonder, so what if I crave? What is going to happen? Please go to your elders and try to observe them. Even someone who is in the verge of death uh, would be talking or would be uttering such words that wish I had, wish I had that. So, this kind of a craving attitude in our life could become a potential prospect of our illness, 
in the later part of life. But later part of life, even in the engage also, you get so much of illness. Uh, if there's so much stress about uh, unfulfilling your uh, talent, unfulfilling your desires, unfulfilling your uh, uh, you know, needs, stuff like that. So you would tend to become a, a kind of an uh, ill person. So this is the implication of your life. So for example, if you've identified your talent and you're not brought it uh, out, that itself is the first part of the business. And if you have identified the talent and you have not identified the real right skill which through which you can bring out your talent, that is also another part of a bottleneck in life. So we need to really understand how we can bring, we can align our talent, which is the nature of us, and what sort of the skills that I need to develop in which I bring out my nature. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, right now, are you in the slide seven or eight? Um, into slide eight. Okay, we just it got changed because we previously were in number sl uh, slide number seven. No, I am on the eight. The craver, desire. Okay, now no, now it has changed. Now it has changed. Okay. So, uh, to my friends uh, who are uh, participants, uh, were you able to listen to me what I was telling uh, previously, or should I repeat it again on the craver part of it? No. So, if you see the middle part of it. Here, if you look at a person might have so much of a talent, but he doesn't have the relevant skills to bring out the talent and there is a balance, imbalance. There's a mismatch of it. Then, he desires to fulfill the talent. In that particular process of desiring, he does a lot of experimentation. Many of the experimentations are done with a hook or crook basis. Or some of the experiments are done with a full awareness, complete awareness that I am doing this for this, that this could be the outcome kind of a thing. Here also, if you really take the history, uh, not only history, I'm not talking about Akbar Baba history, the history of our past, our last decades, like you know, 10 years before, 20 years before. Many people on the basis have miserably failed uh, in the second part of our life. If you uh, go back uh, and uh, analyze in Google or uh, uh, any of the media where you find uh, many companies, many startup companies where, you know, they started up with a great idea, great talent they had and stuff like that. And as they moved in, they never uh, gathered, they never acquired the adequate skills to sustain and they have blasted. Oh, God vanish, disappear rather I would say. So not only the big, big uh, organizations or startups or organizations are talking about even individuals in their own life can be a musician, can be a dancer, can be a whatever. Maybe we have seen, we would have seen, uh, if all of you are cricket fans and stuff like that, you would have uh, happened to see this. Some guys enter into the Indian cricket or international cricket, suddenly they, you know, they perform like anything. And suddenly, if you really look at they would have got dropped forever in life. What? They never gathered the adequate skills. Right? So what we talk about, if we take about a cricketer, what is the skills? Is not only this batting stroke and stuff like that. Understanding his team, understanding his sponsors, understanding the audience, you know, uh, understanding the crowd. So, so many skills they need to have developed. It's not only that I hold a bat and I hit a, you know, stroke or something. That is the only skill is there. So if you have a talent is about 10%, 90% this is on your skill. Coming back to the third part of uh, the slide, uh, the bottom of the slide, you will see the world is uh, welcoming someone called a creator. And today, being a pandemic situation, and the world is really looking out for something called, you know, uh, new normal, uh, whatever jargons, uh, you know, the world is going at. At a subtle level, at a very, very subtle level, everyone is really looking out for a creator. What do I mean by creator? Uh, I'm a software developer. Creator means is that, you know, I paint my software over there. No. How I understand that situation, how I understand the objective of that particular uh, task given to me, how creative I can become. When I become a creative, how creative means how I get involved into that, how I put my body, mind, and soul into that. 
how I gather my colleagues and my team members mind share into that, how I am not hurting others, at the same time pleasing others. So these are all the behavioral skills which make a person a creator. It's not that I take a canvas and I paint or a hold of mine and you know, sing a beautiful uh, song kind of a thing. No, I'm not talking, referring only to that. Every act of us, every act of us, we can become more creative. How? Go to the left side of the screen. There's something called thinking mastery. We all need to come to that stage to master. How can I gain a mastery? What, we, what does a mastery mean? I'll take a few minutes to explain. Uh, commonly, if you look at every fight, every war we are going, every race we are running, uh, in that, be it a career, be it an education, be it a sport, be it anything in matter, even in the family also, there's a level of a dominance. Uh, you know, uh, we need to show I'm excellent than my brother, younger brother, or I'm excellent than my elder brother. I'm excellent in this profession, I'm excellent, excellent in this talent, I'm excellent in this, that, and all kind of thing. We are running behind to prove that we have achieved that excellence. Or in other words, I'm an excellent person in that, I'm excellent in this, I'm excellent in that. But what happens to this? This excellence happens having something, a benchmark in front of us. Right? You understand what I'm trying to tell me? Let's say there is some examination is kept, 100 out of 100 is the total mark, and if you take about 95%, then the 95% becomes a benchmark, and you try to go towards that excellence. Isn't it? Now you understood the meaning of uh, benchmark and excellence, or the significance of benchmark and excellence. We get tired, we get figured out, because however well you want to prove an excellence in a particular field, the benchmark keeps changing. The world is setting a different, 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 different benchmark. The uh, development of technology, the development of social uh, setup is keeping different, different, different benchmarks uh, on, on your excellence. You get tired at some point in time. But if you gain a mastery over any particular field or any particular subject, where any given point in time, if your name is thought about it, okay, some X is there, go to that X. If this task, he will solve it. Even if he doesn't know it also, he will know how to learn about it and solve it. But he is the person to get solved. Thus, if you come to that stage, you will really understand that your skills and your talents are in perfect balance. When I mean a perfect balance, they are not saturated. Please understand, they are not saturated. As you grow your skills, your talent will come up. As you grow your skills, your talent will come up. As your talent have become stronger, 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 your skills will become more and more and more and more and more stronger. So always, ever, at any given point in time, they will have a perfect balance. Perfect balance. And once you get that perfect balance, you don't have to go and tell the world that, hey, I have this skill, I have that skill. Your action, your whole existence, your whole behavior, uh, you know, reflection will automatically will start to change uh, people to uh, you. Uh, in a simple word, you know, if I have to give you a beautiful explanation to that, no one is taught a bee to go and fetch a, uh, fetch a nectar in a flower. The flower simply blossoms. The fragrance of the flower, the aroma, whatever you call it in uh, your own language, it attracts bees instantly. Do you have to uh, go to any uh, Google or Wikipedia to understand the simple principle? The same way, if you blend your talent, if you acquire adequate skills and you blend your talent and skills in such a beautiful balance, believe me, people will automatically, like how we search in Google that and so on. So, the same way, people will search and you know, come uh, free. Having said about this, uh, we spoke about uh, the talent or skills and stuff like that. Now, how to materialize the talent? What is really required and what is the process? Uh, I'm sure, but I'm not too uh, emphasizing on that, but I'm sure 
what we are going to cover up in the next few slides are going to be most important, but has not been taught in any of our schools. I'm not learned in schools or colleges. Uh, some are learned by experience and some might be learned through various gurus of mine. So I request, you know, probably to pull your attention. Maybe so far I've been boring you uh, by doing so much of general gyan and stuff like that. But here I would like to pick you up, you know, and uh, look into that. How the talent to be taken into reality of life. This is the goal for many people. Typically it's goal for me also. So it's good for every many people. And uh, there are certain disconnects uh, of our understanding that, you know, say, uh, you may say that's where I have this talent, but I'm doing this uh, in my career and stuff like that. So that will be so much of thoughts coming in uh, to uh, be your mind. Now, in this particular slide, I'll take you to the transition. Uh, uh, let's see how time permits and how deep we can go about it. And uh, we will take it next slide. Initially, if you really look at uh, uh, the talent is basically nothing but an idea, isn't it? How can I understand whether it's an idea or whether it's something like that? I know I can sing. <laughs> Maybe I'm a bathroom singer or I sing along with my friend or uh, on some other occasions I uh, keep singing kind of a thing. That's an idea that I can sing. Now, uh, having KP, yeah. Sir, the slide is not in, uh, moving yet. You, so, the uh, talent is shown here. I'm on the ninth slide. Okay, now it has been changed to ninth. Yeah. So, uh, no, I'm not moving that slide. As as I explained, I'll be keep moving it. Moving yeah, it okay, okay. So that, you know, there will be a flow, uh, actually. Now, how this talent has to be ripened up. It is only our own efforts, you know, where, through which we can do it. First, we need to invoke the talent into a form of expression, a form of a reality. Again, that is going to happen within our own mind only. So we need to, uh, I would like to say this way, you know, we need to uh, fertilize, uh, you know, the talent or we need to strengthen the talent. We need to feed the talent with all positive energies that, you know, I have this. Uh, I need to bring it out and so that my talent can benefit somebody. Not only me, can benefit somebody. And through the talent, I also get some other benefit. I sing, I get paid. I paint, I get paid. I dance, I get paid. I play, I get paid. I work, I get paid. I design a software, I get paid. I design a building, I get paid. So whatever talent that I have is benefiting me, at the same time, it is also benefiting others. So how do I nurture the talent? Is invoke the, you know, the core, the core of the talent. And then what we do? After we invoke, I invoke the talent, I say, now I have developed the talent internally, then I just keep quiet and then I go sit in a corner and say, do nothing about it. What is the point? Then it might as well, I don't do anything about the talent at all. Then we move on to the stage called an application. When I mean an application, it is an action. Whether it is going to be a physical action or it is going to be an expressive action that I have this talent. Hey world, look at me. I'm going to deliver this. I, For example, let us say I'm a singer. Uh, what I do is today, the technology is so, 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 so developed. I don't need anybody to come and recommend me to somebody else. I just, you know, pick up a YouTube video or whatever it is. I sing a song, record a song, blast it in the, you know, in the public media. I put a painting and put it in the public media or I do something about it, put it in the public media, I develop a software and say, talk about it in the public media. So I apply that in the physical life. Whatever the talent I invoke, I apply that. So the application is another factor where you bring out the talent. So the bringing out the talent means whatever is there within my mind, I need to bring it out to the world. I need to share it with somebody else, my friend, my colleague, my parents, my spouse, my children, uh, my neighbor, something, and so on and so forth. Now, when you start applying uh, this particular talent, then law of nature works so particularly that when you apply it in the right way, that will give the result what you really want. That cannot be any kind of a deviation or that cannot be any kind of a uh, point of failures and stuff like that. 
suppose if the chain which I have put it in every uh, you know middle of a uh, uh, that's the purpose behind the screen uh, between the invoking and the application there is a chain if the chain is cut that's it. then the talent goes back into the suppressing mode if the application is not connected to the results then the chain is broken then everything is gone so first it all starts with the ideation and then what exactly happens who is the or which is the factor which is the mode which is the tool that is going to bring your talent out to the results Results is not recognition of the people or appreciation of the people and stuff like that. I wanted to sing in a YouTube video. I invoke my thought. I do. I I I'm just not worried about whether you know people are going to see it or not. They are going to like, comment, and all this stuff. I apply. I pick up my mobile phone. You know, connect it, and I just sing it. And I see myself. You know, the results happening. The recorded video. I see that, and then I really brought out my talent. So for that, what it requires is a skills, presentation skill is required, or uh, you know the confidence is also building up a confidence is also a skill that is also required. Endurance is a skill that is also required, and uh, you know physically connecting things, getting everything facilitated is also acquiring the environment, the conducive environment is also a skill that is required, and the techn technical for us, blah blah blah, whatever it is required, that is also really required. So the skills plays a major part of bringing you, your talent, out to the world and portray yourself. Ultimately, this is what the end objective of every individual. But yeah, we are unique in a different different field of action. We are different, uh, uh, unique in our own talents and you know and uh, stuff like that. Now what happens? The last is the key. Your talent is transformed to a result. It's very interesting. I'm putting I put a word transform uh, because in a life the growth path is this: you take one action, you fulfill that action, complete that action, then you move on to the next, then you move on to the next, then you move on to the next. Otherwise, we can uh, take uh, this connected to every individual's life, you will find there's some amount of truth in it. We take up something, we don't complete that. Then we take up something, we don't complete that. Because when we don't complete the first task, we take a second task with half mind. Yeah? Have you experienced it? Or you have heard about it? Then we this regret. Let me put that way: a regret of not completing the task one will not allow you to perform in the task two. So naturally, when you happen to take up the task three, the regret of task one and task two will become like a you know, big giant, and they will try to thorns on you. So you will not be able to do the task three. So you will start shrinking yourself at the point of time. You will get blurred up. You will get tired of so many things in life. So today. Uh, anybody at the age of uh, mid, mid age or something other you have find or found the people feeling so tired and they lost their energy, they lost their enthusiasm. Uh, they lost their life. Almost like the way they are talking like you know, kind of thing. Uh, they're not so energy. You know, you don't feel like particularly whenever we, we move with the people, we be with the people, we need to feel like you know, we get energized by them. But today ninety Ninety-nine percent of the world has become completely, you know, out of energy. Why? Because the fulfillment is not there. So here, unless and otherwise your ideation thoughts, ideation talents, it's transformed into a result. You will not be able to create another one for your future. Now, coming uh, to the interesting part of the slide, as I was introducing the earlier slide, uh, the idea is to give you various dimensions. Of what is talent is all about, and uh, how to identify those talents, which we'll be going through the a uh, couple of other slides, which I have that much of sufficient time. Huh? Now let's find the source of the talent. Where does the talent come? I think I've been uh, putting it in a very brief in the beginning. First, certain talents are very very inherent, very very, inherent, where uh, you can take it from a baby days. You know. Uh, 
you could have seen a baby, some baby, uh, it goes freely with everybody, completely freely with everybody. Suddenly a stranger comes to their home, uh, to that particular home, and it goes to the stranger. It doesn't have any differentiation or any hesitation or any fear or any, any, any uh, kind of uh, a negative uh, or holding back emotions. Certain babies or certain children or certain kids you know, identified that, you know, they always feel the same. You know, even with your own uh, known circle, known relatives or whoever it is, they are going to come to the home or something like that, these kids will go and hide behind the parents. Kind of. So these are all the inherent nature. Likewise, certain talents are very, very inherent. There are uh, certain uh, talents uh, which comes from the inspiration. For example, a child, a baby, uh, as you and me were, uh, we are from that stage of uh, You would have seen a music or uh, something like that, you know, you could have got inspired by the music. Uh, some child would have got inspired by uh, a sport or some child by uh, a book or that. Also. And uh, some child, you know, if you really uh, give some toys or something like that, if you start breaking and you know, doing all kinds of research and stuff, it gets inspired by what is this all about? Okay, break this what will happen, so break this what will happen. So they probably can become a scientist. The one, uh, uh, you know, uh, can become a public figure or, or a celebrity, as we said in the first day, uh, kind of a category of a child or a kid, you know, where it goes with, mingles with everybody like a, uh, you know, free uh, and flow uh, kind of a thing. And the reserved uh, people, uh, kids, will not try to mingle with people and stuff like that and they will be more of a, uh, you know, morose kind of type and, you know, uh, whatever task given to them, they will be doing it silently and they will not mingle with others and kind of a thing. So such talented people uh, can never become a leaders. You know, I'll be relating that to the uh, skills uh, later, where today people are looking for leadership skills you want, uh, they want technical skills they want, they want social skills they want, and everything to be a blend in a particular person. Yeah, whether it is possible or not, yeah, it is possible, but, you know, uh, it requires a bit of a time uh, and uh, for people to develop it. So, as I said, the second is going to be the inspiration where I see something about it, I see that, okay, uh, I would like to do that or I would like to attempt that and kind of a thing. That's how certain talents have been built, uh, like uh, a painter or a cricketer or anybody for the matter. And uh, uh, many uh, cases that it may happen that, you know, uh, I would have seen a doctor who's my uncle or aunt or whatever they would have got inspired and then I wanted to become a doctor or a lawyer or a further or a counselor. So that's how the inspiration happens. The third source is very, very interesting source, uh, which mostly happens at the unconscious level of our uh, or unconscious level of our mind or unconscious level of our, our you know, observing nature in the uh, society, which is called an intuition. When a given situation, any any given situation, suddenly you know uh, a person can rise up uh, either to solve the situation or to avoid the situation or kind of a thing. You know that that's kind of a public speaking talent or public addressing talent kind of a thing. Let's say there's a crowd uh, gathered or people uh, quarreling with each other and stuff like that. A silent person will be walking there. He sees that situation and he suddenly some intuition comes in, comes out of him and says that he just goes. And he picks up right words, the right action, the right body gesture, right uh, in a body language. He solves the problem. You know, he makes the uh, environment to calm to a uh, cool down situation, and then he walks away. So these are all the three. I'm not saying these are the only three. By and large, these are all the three sources of our talents. So we need to really get back uh, to our calm time and say that what kind of a talent that we have from that. You can easily go to the source by the questioning within yourself that uh, what is inherent in me? How do I find inherent talent? Okay. Uh, this probably I'll try to explain the uh, little more time. Uh, let's say a person, I'll take one person as an example, uh, he's watching television, there is beautiful Carnatic uh, program, Carnatic song program is going on. This guy becomes restless. He walks away. He comes back again. Uh, he switches on. Uh, that is a kind of uh, his force is going on. 
have some kind of a scope or something going on. Then this guy sits bring his focus and he starts to enjoy that. Me, what? The talent of the sport, I'm not talking about the sport, either it's a football or a cricket or whatever it is, but the talent, the sporting talent. Like I need to participate, I need to do this, I need to run, I need to win, I need to do this, I need to do that. So the active uh, sportive talent is inherent in it. Other condition, if you really look at a person will be watching the sports program, he will not be interested in that, he will switch off and go. After some time he comes, he switches on another channel, there's a Carnatic uh, music going on. What happens? This guy, whether he has learned Carnatic or not, he just sits, whether he knows the musicians, whether he knows the Raga, Swara, doesn't matter. He just simply sits and listens. It means the inherent potential, inherent potential of that music as a talent is seen. What has happened is either due to family environment or to any other social environment, he's been hesitated or he's been suppressed to stand by not communicating to people or uh, sometimes the parents or anybody not identified his talent, it is gone down. It has been suppressed. Now, at even at any grown age, you know, if the guy wants to bring it out, you know, he may not become a singer or he may not become a dancer, but at least we can see those programs, you know, try to bring out all of these suppressed uh, emotions. Now, earlier we saw source of talent. I'm sure uh, it's been an online session, so I cannot even ask you, uh, are you interested or you're getting bored or you're getting something new or you're getting bored about it, uh, but please do share your that. Uh, so that it will help us to develop a you know, more interesting and you know, more uh, uh, rich based program. So here, uh, this is something very new and uh, you know, probably you may look something dry about it, but as you grow, if you start contemplating on this on a daily activity, you will find uh, some other day you may find this program has been very uh, interesting and stuff like that. So as we have seen uh, the source of the talent, now how do I identify my what sort of talent that you have. A talent is nothing but your second nature. So how do I identify it? There are four steps right now on the screen. Are you able to see the screens? Hello? So I see you. Hello, so which side I have are you? <laughs> Got to see. Yeah. So the first way of identifying talent is you, how much creative are you? How much the creativity is in you? Creativity. Sir, right. For some, they could be able to see the slides, it seems. Uh, we are on the 11th slide. Uh, the creative, obsessive, transformative, and executive. Okay. So, okay. Due to since that, the slideshow is not uh, on, so that uh, some people could be able to see. Uh, now, is it okay? Now, uh, now, okay, now what we could be able to see is talent, creative, Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So first, uh, we need to really understand that you know how much of creativity uh, you know I have in me. Uh, typically, you see, this is a vast subject actually, where you know the one hour is little not uh, sufficient given to me or to you. Uh, but how much of justice I can do uh, to this uh, session, I'll be able to do it. Creativity doesn't mean that you know people commonly you know our uh, interpretation of uh, our seniors, our school, our education system, our environment. Is you know bifurcated certain things not connecting one on uh, each other so we can you know evolve uh, as a much matured personality. Our growth is uh, mental growth has been uh, you know uh, concealed uh, by various wrong interpretation. But I mean a creativity. Creativity is there in everything. If you are cooking, you can be creative. If you are talking, you can be creative. If you are walking, you can be creative. If you are writing, you can be creative. If you're presenting, you can be creative. So everywhere, you know, it is not only taking a, you know, canvas and painting creative or creating some art uh, and craft articles. No, that's not restrained or restricted only to that. How creative I'm putting my ideas to others can is that momentum. Like, uh, you can relate that to Newton's third law or third law of motion. What you give, you get. So how creative you are putting it across, that much of result and that much of support, that much of encouragement. 
that kind of pathway, that kind of opportunity, you get it back. So creativity, how creative am I? Let us say in a even relationship, there is a problem uh, with your sorry to say, uh, you have a boss or uh, uh, some relative or anybody where with whom uh, you know, they keep coming and criticizing you and stuff like that. Even that moment of uh, situation, you can bring out your creativity and convert that into your pleasing situation for at least yourself. You then handling uh, all uh, sequences in the relationship, the creativity works. So that would be your talent. So if you identify this as a talent and relate that uh, you know, to your uh, career, profession, or whichever uh, occupation you are engaged into, a student, or uh, for a student, how creative he is writing his answer papers, impresses the person who is correcting, uh, who is unknown person who is sitting in some part of uh, the world, correcting and you know putting a good mark. Is it that uh, a classical example for me to understand how creativity can be, how creativity can become a, a tool for us to achieve more things in life? Second part is obsessive. When I mean an obsessive, or it is not I meant, you know, it is the, uh, the science of wisdom says, you know, uh, what is obsessive uh, nature? The obsessive nature is I have taken an idea, I have taken a principle, I have taken a goal in life. And I ensure that I stick to that goal. I ensure that nothing shakes the goal, or nothing wavers me off, nothing shakes my goal off, nothing disturbs my goal off. And I take the goal so beautifully, you know, step on step and step on step and step on step and step on step and end it with my activity. As I said, the talent transfer. That is an obsessive nature. So you may try to find, uh, you know, when you get up into uh, caught up, uh, uh, when you get caught into any kind of argument or something like that, you know, you stick to your point. And, uh, you try to, uh, you know, make sure that you know nobody else can objects your points or you know, disturbs your points or distracts uh, you uh, from your particular ideal or particular principle, particular goal, and you know, take away. That is one of your nature. If that has been your nature, please identify that. And try to groom it well. What could be an obsessive example? <coughs> defense. You take a, uh, a defense guy, he becomes so obsessive. He knows this is my border. No enemy should enter into my border. At the same time, none of my people should go into the enemy's camp or enemy's side. So I protect them. I protect, uh, you know, enemy entering into, uh, disturbing into my border. This is one uh, classical example of giving obsessiveness. Second obsessiveness could be a doctor. You go to a doctor, the doctor becomes very obsessive about uh, you know, your, that particular illness or something in front of the person. So he ensures that, you know, he does all necessary things. You know, he suggests all necessary for medicine, extra, blah, 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 thing. And he ensures the end objective is this guy becomes normal and he comes back. The third nature is, I put it as a transformative over here. Uh, here I would like to uh, use two different terms for a better understanding of that. One you can understand as a negotiative or other you can understand it for trading off. Here what happens is a person might have to go through a lot of hurdles as an obsessive person doesn't get shakes away. A creative person always creates opportunities to ensure nobody enters into his you know, arena or he just keeps going with his goal. Obsessive guy protects his entire ideal. But this transformative guy is kind of a nature, transformative or a negotiation or a, a what you want to call it as a, a trade, a, it's, a nation, uh, it's a kind of a nature or a talent. Training is a talent. So where I give something, I carry some ideal, some disturbance comes in midway, then I see that if I need to carry my goal further down, I need to become flexible. So I get the point. So you negotiate. You negotiate with the disturbance. You negotiate with the odd frequencies that is coming and hitting you. It could be human, it could be a, a nature, it could be anything for that matter. The fourth nature or the fourth way of identifying your talent, I put it as an executive. Uh, uh, I would like to make it as a present tense, like execution. That could be many people, you know, if really like you give them the task, they don't think, they don't obsess about it, 
they don't do any kind of trade off given task done just given task done having said this i need to take uh, one more step uh, on this particular uh, slide uh, which is very very important uh, where i should not miss out this point these are all not four different natures present in all four different individuals it's everything is within each and every human being who are living with us who were born before us and who would be born after us they will be coming with the, all the four qualities all the four talents in them which dominates becomes their life becomes the cause of their life so if i am a creative person my obsessiveness would have been you know dormant my trading of would have been a uh, little dormant and my execution level will be little dormant but keep on creating opportunities either leadership qualities if you really look in a corporate jargon that picture of yeah uh, needs to have this kind of creative where i have a task i know how to get this task done by x y c how to pass on the task how to reverberate my task to the uh, you know uh, end uh, layer of my organization this will be a dormant uh, you know a dormant uh, nature of that particular uh, leadership quality now the same person will have a little bit of an obsessiveness so he monitors like this my task taken to the end level whether it is taken at right time or right situation and stuff like that now if you really look at he was creative he created an idea he has uh, passed this idea to so many people and start creating them as his clone mental clone not physical clone of getting that idea in so that is the level of creativity he applied first then he started obsessing like if the task is going on the right time then the transformative nature of his comes at a later point in time give and take a person is sick today okay you take leave today and come back i said negotiation okay today you can take off tomorrow you come and do the job trade off okay i am giving you a uh, leave today and get things done and the fourth is execution when everything is being done then he ensures that the task is being executed this is one individual example of all the four nature how to of the talents which i have uh, you know explain now i'll take another example of multiple uh, nature of people coming together and uh, bringing their talent together this can be inspiration for the students and uh, for the employees many employees may say like you know how to express my talent you know uh, how to portray my talent so that you know i grow kind of a thing maybe this part uh, of uh, uh, thing might be interesting to you now let us take a construction industry or a manufacturing industry or a marketing industry as an example we will take construction which the easy thing of understanding because everyone can understand it very easy you go and show a bare land to an architect and you say this is what i want you put your ass to him he becomes so creative so creative that he designs you he get the entire your idea and puts his you know experiences knowledge and thoughts and stuff like that he creates a design called an architecture then the creative part is over then it goes to the obsessive part obsession part obsession part is given uh, to an engineer a uh, engineer plans for it okay this is the architecture design i have seen i need to plan i need to start from here start from there i need to do this that and all this but the engineer starts completely obsessing into the architecture he gets succumbed into the architecture design or whatsoever it is then comes the question of a transformation where i said it was negotiation or it was a trade off or kind of a nature uh, that's a talent where the back end people come uh, forth at, as a third stage uh, come forth and they say like okay i need this material from this vendor this is from that vendor this is the price i need to go and this is the buyer of the apartment or whatever it is or the building or whatever it is they get into the trading mode so that is one of the nature now fourth is going to be the executive execution nature. execution nature means you can understand the the work of a labors you know where they come in the morning they say today you have to uh, you know rise up uh, under tricks he has got no thinking job no obsession job no trade off job nothing 
Then lift the brick, lift the brick, apply the cement and keep it, uh, rising up the structure as instructor is being given. Now, if you really look at the four talents in a four different uh, layers of uh, functionalities, four different natures of human uh, bifurcations into the human nature. And the first example, as we saw a doctor or uh, on the male or whatever it is, all the four are together in him. So, these are the two dimensions, you know, maybe at, at this moment uh, you can try to understand. Am I moving on to the next screen? Uh, we are still looking at the screen number uh, 11. Okay, it is changed to 12 now. Yeah. Okay. Also, sir, kindly edit. I know it's yeah. the time, it's around 620. Oh, I'm sorry, then I'll try to finish off uh, a yeah. little faster. Okay. So, so we can also move on to the QA session since we have some questions from the audience. Yeah. Uh, so here, uh, I, I would like to rush up on uh, this particular slide on uh, how do we acquire skills. First, to acquire skills, we need to have an aspiration. And what is that aspiration? As I was saying, uh, commonly we've been taught and learned that, you know, we aspire from the external world. That is a way. I'm not saying that is completely wrong or uh, it's not said it has been wrong. But if the aspiration comes from your talent, I have this talent and you aspire your own talent and you try to bring it out so it will tell you what skills you need to acquire these are the steps i am building up uh, they are not uh, different steps but they are you know in a sequence you need to understand then i go and acquire uh, relevance uh, you know skills for that for example today i want to become a uh, uh, technical expert or something like that i have a talent of creation creativity and stuff like that then i aspire my talent then I see what is that uh, base talent I have. I've done some computing knowledge and stuff like that. I uh, today the big jargon word, buzzword, uh, data scientist. Uh, so I aspire. I go acquire the knowledge of whatever is required for the data science. You know, whatever wherever the institution uh, it is being done and stuff like that. Then I analyze. I have acquired this talent. Now me and the world, where do we fit in? How I need to, you know, enhance uh, my uh, analysis skills. Uh, analyze uh, and you know enhance my skills and then you observe the learning comes out of it and you just simply go and apply in your real life uh, this was the inspiration uh, uh, behind this topic where a person said you know how do i portray my talent uh, for, to the contemporary world now uh, this is the answer where you know i wanted to connect it uh, uh, to that uh, thing so identify your skills uh, identify your knowledge uh, talent and according to that you start acquiring your skills but here the failures and success the factors of determination you can see in both sides of the screen one is conscious if you are conscious that this is my talent and these are all the skills that can support my talent that, that can bring out my talent like as we saw the statue in the first uh, uh, second screen uh, you want to become that kind of a celebrity you want to become a statue you want to be worshipped by people nothing wrong in that but you need to be conscious about what kind of a skills that I'm going to acquire? That is most important. Rather, you know, taking the right side of the screen, compulsive, someone said this, someone said that, uh, you know, this is that, this is that, here is a free, uh, be available, here it's paid, so no, 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 I will not pay, I will go for the free and kind of thing. So on those kind of a, a compulsion, if you really take it up, then you can just imagine what it could happen. Now, this is a slide which I wanted to, uh, as a, uh, I've been given a deadline, so I'm just rushing uh, uh, through this uh, slide. I'm sorry about it. Now, what ideally uh, your uh, talent and skill combination should give you? Uh, I would like to take, take it from the left hand side and then we will go into the right hand side so that you will understand the flow of what it will happen to you when you blend your talent and skills together. I have a talent, I don't have a skill. I cannot call myself a knowledge person because knowledge is something acquired. For me, it is a database, just a mere database. It has got nothing to do with life. If the knowledge is not transforming into a result, uh, then the acquiring the knowledge is actually us not acquiring it. Once you get an adequate knowledge, you will not be able to sit in one place. It will create a passion in you to drive in you. To go and deliver that uh, it's, it's something like uh, you bought a new bike brand new bike uh, you just 
brought it from the showroom and parked it in your parking lot of a car in a parking lot and you come home uh, have you experienced that you cannot sit peacefully you will feel like going and driving 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 right so the passion once the passion is awakened in you the knowledge is awakening the passion in you then you will become a steadfast person as i was telling uh, on the uh, previous slide once you fix in your goal you should never shake off so the passion strengthens you in such way that you know you become steadfast you don't change your goals very frequently you don't change your objectives very frequently you feel that okay let that be a problem let that be a problem i'll handle it kind of thing to handle problem what tool i have i don't need to go to some xyz i've got a first okay i can't delay upon so this steadfastness automatically will start strengthening you from within your doubts your all negative emotions will start disappearing and you will accomplish what you really want if this is not a long term goal that you know i start a goal now i you know uh, ended up in 20 30 or something like that i'm talking on a daily basis today i have what knowledge i have about today what i'm going to do about today is it giving me passion for next one hour how i'm going to be like so this can be on a momentary basis also now what will happen uh, if all these things uh, comes uh, closer now if really look at we have covered the left every action has its own retrospective effect isn't it it has got its own reflective effect okay let me put this word reflective effects so once you start gaining knowledge then it gives you passion when you gain knowledge actually what happens see the right hand side the weakness the fear can i do it or not the doubt breaks once you gain a passion you will endure any kind of a uh, you know criticism or any kind of a uh, uh, demotivation coming from babies and you will just say okay fine boss let it be i will keep going on the moment you become steadfast what will do is it will give you flexibility but they look a contradiction isn't it steadfast means being firm and how can i be flexible but yes this is something a deeper uh, you know uh, principles in psychology what uh, uh, you know uh, a person should try to learn and follow but i am clear that this is what is my goal and keep going on that could be some disturbances coming in consciously if i look at the disturbance say if i continue further i will get tired i will get hurt so i what i will do is i'll take a pause for a while and i'll go again and continue my journey so this is the flexibility not having a rigid that no no anybody let criticize anything that happened to me i will go on fight then you will ultimately lose your end object once this flexibility is there in you it gives you a positive energy ultimately you know you want to become a positive personality and you want to deliver good results to yourself to everybody for the matter and thus you come back into the fulfillment mode of life having said all this uh, i feel i'm happy uh, that i could cover whatever uh, i have gathered uh, for this particular session and uh, i wish you try to take uh, the uh, essence of them now you will be able to define yourself i am this the blend of a talent and knowledge now i leave it to you for the questions all right sir it's a wonderful session so audience if you uh, please have any questions uh, please post it on the question tab which on the left hand side of the screen uh, so, so we have a question sir what are the skills and talents that are indeed necessary at post covid situation like what are skills that is required or talent that is required in post covid world uh thank you uh, who has asked the question uh, this, this question is asked by mr hari kumar kg uh thank you mr hari kumar uh, i would like to say uh, you know very simple and one word answer is learning skills that is what is going to be a greatest skill one should develop when i mean learning it's not that going to a library going to a book or going to be a google or whatever it is start observing whatever is around you your family your colleagues uh, your neighbors start learning from them what they are doing how they are doing what i can uh, learn from them learning skills is the most 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 important skill everybody should develop so here i am not talking about only psychological learning here i am talking about uh, technical skills learning also whatever may be the skills today uh, which is very popular you know you can uh, go to google and stuff like that but they say this is the top skill required this is the second top skill required kind of thing so those things also you should try to acquire you should try to be in rhythm with the change 
So post-COVID, do you think if something is really going to happen? No, even in the past also the same. World has been changing. Only thing is we were freely moving out. Today we are not moving out. That is the only difference. Only thing is we were working from home. office today we are working from home. That's the only difference. So please, uh, underline this quote. Learning skills, observation skills, is very, very, very important. Anytime, even after COVID. We never saw COVID in 2015. Uh, there used to be all uh, this motivational uh, quotes and say, after five years, where you want to be? And everybody will say, I want to be this, I want to be that. The fifth year has come. Where are we? Even the motivator is sitting in his home. And those who are, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, responding uh, in a childish way are also sitting in their own, uh, and, you know, sitting in front of the uh, system and doing something about uh, something different. So don't have a, too much of a, a hopes on COVID or something like that. Ever become a learner. You will be ever successful. Thank you. Great, sir. In continuation to that answer, uh, Mr. Vijay, Vijay have asked a question. How skill will impact while hiring and which skill we have to you know, get ourselves improved and how to get this, those skills improved? How you No, know, it's more like how skill will impact while hiring. So which I, I probably is talking about what are the skills that is required while hiring? What what will the, you know, the, the employers will be looking at? And yeah. next thing is like which skill we have to no improve ourselves like which skill should be that as a person which skill uh, which skill that we have to improve and how yeah. to improve it uh, i will bifurcate as the question is uh, split into two uh, let me also try to answer that in two parts the first skill whenever you are talking about the hiring aspect of it uh, please try to uh, put more of your effort and energy uh, in understanding skills when I mean an understanding skills, just imagine a triangle, just visualize a triangle. The candidate is there, you are here, and the common objective is in the top edge of the triangle. Just visualize this. So how much the candidate is understanding your objectives? You would have given them the JDs. Uh, what level of understanding, understanding that the candidate has got about himself first, as his own personality, first look into that. Second look into that, how much he's able to understand the organization principle given by you. Because you are also a human being. You need to have a communication. You have your own nature of communication. So through your communication, how much has he understood? And then once these two parameters are met, and just look at the top, whether he is at the vertical, understanding the common objective of, of the entire thing. When I mean a common objective, the employee is joining an organization is part of the common objective. Is he aware of it? The awareness is the key. So just the answer to the first part is understanding itself is a skill. Allowing space for people to perform, it's a skill. When I mean performance, not I'm not talking about joining performance. I'm talking about even at the interview level itself. Today, uh, uh, many places we come to know that you know the interviewers say that seven seconds they screen a, a CV and ten second ten minutes they do an interview. No, actually these things uh, uh, cannot give you the results. The real results, what you want. I may be busy about so many things, so I can, uh, uh, if I'm feeling so busy, I can call the candidate on Sunday, uh, like the same online. I'm trying to give you more space to express himself. So understanding is the first part of uh, the question, uh, what uh, you would ask for. The second part of the question is, what kind of skills I need to develop is communication. I'm not talking about the language communication, so please understand. Any language you talk to your manager, any language you talk to your organization, whatever language you know, that doesn't really matter at all. But end of the day, am I, as I was talking about the creative skills and the uh, uh, the four skills, what I was talking about it, how much creative I'm able to make myself, creative skills. If you make the creative skills, automatically this elder brother communication will auto follow that, like Ram Lakshman types. Automatically, you will choose the right words or powerful words with energy. You just, you know, share the words with you. That will reverberate in the environment and that will go up, up there and come back. So, summarizing this with the candidate while hiring, please uh, have more of a, expand more of your understanding skills in terms of your personal growth or policy oriented growth that you are uh, trying to uh, face in life. Uh, 
ensure you have a creative space. Over creative.